here and here and that's all good oats how are you feeling love hi leo uh give me a call next week okay yesterday i promised that i would come on and i would um Uh, I would um, take some of your questions. So I'm not really going to talk about uh, the manual per se, but um, I will um, I will field any questions that you have. So so let's get some questions. No questions? So you're all doing copper plate script wonderfully. I'm very, very pleased about that. Um, no questions about the script, about the angle, about the pen hold, about letters that you might be struggling with. Um, what? Is it that one? Let's see. No? Flourishes. Okay, let me get a pencil. So you need to be a little bit more specific. Uh, what specifically about flourishes? Um, Rachel, I will not speak about paper because I'm working on something and until I get that sorted, I, I don't really want it. You'd like to see some flourishes. Okay, I, I want to help you understand the problems you're having with flourishes. So I'm not just going to do flourishes. I, I need you to tell me what you're struggling with. Drills for flourishes. Okay, so let's let's sort of figure this out. Um, I want you to be conscious of this word drills. Um, I personally, I, I, I try not to use this word because I, I sort of see it as a, as a little bit of a negative connotation because when you think of drilling something, it's usually quite an aggressive thing. Um, and I think when you think of, of calligraphy, one of the things that you should you should think about is how are you thinking of calligraphy so if you are thinking of attacking the page then whatever you do is going to be quite um, aggressive so hi Anne when it comes to drills you want to think in a slightly more positive way um, so by, by, by tackling the word in your head in a, in, a, in a better way by, by making it more approachable you you sort of deal with the outcome a little bit better now the thing about flourishing is this in order to flourish you have to understand what you're doing so there are two aspects to flourishing the first thing is what can the tool do if you don't know what the tool can do there is no way you can execute what you think you have in your head. You just can't get it out. So understanding what the tool can do and how that tool does it is really important. So um, I'm going to going to do this uh, from here first, and then I'll, I'll swap I'll swap the the, the camera around. Um, so. What, when, I, when I write, when I flourish, the thing that you have to remember is this. Most flourishes work best when, um, once I finish this, I will, I will deal with the other stuff. So, uh, Tata Calligraphy, you need to, once I finish the flourishing, if you, if you repost that, that would be helpful. So this is your tool, right? This is the edge of the page here. Notice the tool is parallel to the edge of the page. Whenever you're writing,
the nib is facing the axis of the script, which in this case is 55 degrees. If you're going to flourish, the nib has to face parallel to the baseline because there is no way the nib can spread this way if it's facing this way. So that's the first thing you have to understand about flourishing. Most flourishes are done with the tool facing a different direction to the writing. Um, so you have to be quite conscious of, of what you're intending to do. Now, if you're flourishing off a letter, so what I'll do is I will swap this around because now that you understand that I'm, I'm showing some flourishing, Right. So if you're flourishing off of letter, so you want to see this. I need a little bit of couching. So I'm putting a little uh, bit of paper underneath where I'm working, so I have a little bit of uh, sensi more sensitivity to the to the page. So we see here. A line of universal beauty and a connective stroke. But ideally, what you want is look at, look at these 55 so they're parallel to each other. So I'm facing the axis of the script. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Okay, so that can quite easily connect there. So let's do that again. Um, one and two and three and four, five and six and seven. And eat. Okay. So what we see here is all of the weights are on the 55. And by making all the weights on the 55, you end up with all the hairlines on the opposite side. So you have this really interesting sense of balance. The other thing to consider is how is the flourish constructed? So just to show you what I was talking about earlier on, so we have an L. I Notice I've stopped. I'm lifting. I'm turning the tool so it's horizontal. And I'm going back over the letter. And I'm going back out through the letter, out, 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 and pick up that line. Now you can do this in one go. It's, it's quite difficult to do because you have to, you basically have to do this, this, and then you have to do this and this and that. So uh, I, I would need to sort of show you that from slightly further away. Um, so the other thing to start considering now is what angles are you looking at? So we have this angle here, which is the 55 and we have this angle which is the baseline. But what is this angle? So how do these angles relate to each other? Now, this angle is roughly, I would think this is about five degrees. Now, the funny thing about this is the connective stroke this stroke is at 
50 degrees. And this is the line of universal beauty. So this is at 55 and this is at 50. So this is something I discussed quite extensively in the manual. Um, so this, I, I've also found that there's something called a, something that I've discovered called a variance of tolerance. So when you are at the 55, one of the things that tends to happen is your nib, you are trying very hard to keep this nib on this line. Now look at what happens to the nib. As you write, the nib sort of faces there or it might go there, but it tends to stay 2.5 degrees on either side of that 55. Because at 2.5, you can still get, so this is at 55, this is it at 2.5 or 55, and this is it at 2.5 or 55 on either side of the 55. So that helps you. I tend to use 55 for a very specific reason. Um, so I, you know, I, 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 I also discuss using 50 and 52, but again, the structure that I've come up with for the fourfold symmetry in the manual uses 55 for a very, very set reason, which I discuss in the manual. Um, so with the, with the nib moving around the 55, you have this variance of tolerance to play. And the funny thing about this is, this being double the variance helps you to understand that flourishes have a, a really wonderful sort of structure to them, um, a geometric and a mathematical structure. So uh, let's look at how a flourish crosses. So if we did this, or we do an H, Notice the H is essentially two lines of universal beauty. But if you look at the relationship, so I'm, I'm going to use my uh, angular confinement principle here. If you look at the relationship of these lines, you can have a number of variations. So the first variation is this. So we can go one, where this is equal to this. I should really be doing this on my grid because my grid would make this a lot easier. Um, uh, let's see if I can grab a grid very quickly. That's too big. So this is, so I'm going to use my grid for this because it just makes life a little bit easier. So this is the majuscule grid. So again, you can find these on the website under the manual, just fill in the requisite information. So we have what we have here the H, one, one, two, and then we have two for the other eight, other line, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have six. So the first H can, yes, so we have one, And essentially, this is equal to that. So this should be a little bit longer. Um, but that's from a mathematical point of view. You could also do this H because this works out to uh, 3 by 4, and this works out to 4 by 3. Um, so we have 4 and 3, and we have... Uh, three and four. So I, I, again, I talk about this in the manual, uh, in the flourishing section. Um, but from a from a technical point of view, how is a flourish constructed? 
So the most important thing to remember flourish is this. A flourish has a baseline. So copper plate script, the capitals have the line of universal beauty. The minuscules have the swelled stroke and the flourishing uses the something that I, I call the line of universal beauty loop. So it's a line of universal beauty on its side which goes up and over to form a loop. Because this loop does this. Okay. Now, when you, most people, when they start calligraphy, they usually start it because they can make pretty flourishes. The pretty flourishes that most people see are these. Well, so you think that this is the principal stroke, but the principal stroke is actually this and lift. So you're making the loop and you're making the loop and you're making the loop. And this really helps to space the flourish. So notice one of the things that I, I really want you to pay attention to here is, um, Grab another sheet of paper. Um, is speed. Notice I am not writing quickly. Flourishes don't just zip off your finger. You have to take your time to produce the flourish. So one of the flourishes I look at is how flourishes and letters are related. So we can get this. So now, one of the things I've done here is I want you to see these two lines. So they have the heaviest weight. And I've varied the weight here. And I've not put any weight here. So the, the kind of weight you're trying to sort of, um, to, 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 to you, you should have variable weights when, you, when you're trying to de decorative flourishing. So let's look at a uh, flourishing of B. So in a B, we would have something like this. Notice this has most of the weight on it. Then the next shape with the weight is there, and there, and there, because So knowing your Roman capitals is really important because in Roman capitals, the top B, the top part of the top bowl of the B is uh, smaller than the bottom bowl of the B. And there's no flourish on this side. So this flourish here is only to really balance the weight here as well as the size of this ellipse on that side. Um, now I'm going to, I, I've shown this before, and I talk about it in the manual. Um, a flourish is constructed by using geometry. So all of the diagonal lines are at 55. And so we can produce this into here, into there, into there and into there. So that will give us this flourish. Now my arm isn't moving as smoothly because I have the, um, I have the holder for the uh, camera right in front of me. So I'm actually, both arms are around this holder that's sticking up. Um, and you can see how the geometry really helps in the construction of a flourish. Uh, equally, you can construct an interlacing flourish
And notice the pen is facing the direction of the spread. Um, so we're going to go and one, two, three, and I'm going to run out of ink. And remember, up and two. So I'm trying to get back that line. Notice these lines are parallel and these lines are parallel. And that's how you construct a flourish. Now, I have a nice tripod. The problem is I'm, I'm using this table. <laughs> Unless you're going to buy me a Christmas present, Miriam. <laughs> it would be lovely to see you again. Um, so ideally, you want to take your time with this kind of flourishing. That is not, it's not this. You have to take your time with it. You really have to take your time with, you know, sort of working with the flourish. Uh, all right, so that's enough on flourishing. Uh, the letter M. So this is something that I deal with at the beginning of the majuscules. It's a real issue, this A-M-N-V-W. Um, and I start with this A. because I want you to understand that this is a connective stroke. This is not a line of universal beauty. This stroke is not at 55. If you put this stroke at 55, what you get is this. When it, what you want to do is you want to get this into that. These two strokes are not at the same angle. Because if they were, as in here, the lines running through them would be parallel. So if you're not getting, and so I, I, this, I, I, I sort of came up with a, a new term to describe this. I've called this a, an obtuse curvilinear triangle because it's an obtuse angle and the lines are not straight, they are they're curvilinear. So I've come up with this term to describe the triangle that makes up this space. Um, so let's look at that again. So if you notice, this makes a triangle. It doesn't make a parallelogram. If you're making a parallelogram, then this is a problem. Uh, on a more technical note, this little turn here, so I call these pulleys because you're going around the pulley. This little pulley here is a sixth. The pulley around the connective stroke is a third. So these curves are different. This is a bigger curve and this is a smaller curve. This curve meets a line that's at 50. There's another pulley here which matches this one. So this is a third, this is a third, and this is the third. Whereas with the line of universal beauty and the deposition of weight across it, we have a sixth here, and we have a sixth here, and we have two thirds in the middle. So that's how that, that works. Now, how it works in an M is essentially the same. So we have a connective stroke, a line of universal beauty, connective stroke and another a line that turns in uh, that is started as a line of universal beauty coiled a pointed loop stroke because um, of course it comes from the L so seeing how different parts of the letters relate to each other is really important somebody asked about a C so this is how a C works now, the thing about the C is, let's go back to this word drills. That is a really important shape. This is what started the manual. 
because I worked out that this, which is called a major axis, an ellipse, not an oval, because when you think of an oval, this is what you think of. If you're thinking of this, your letter is going to be wrong. So think ellipse, not oval. So when you, when I, I started doing this exercise, and uh, what happened was, this is your major axis. That's why this exercise is so important. This is your minor axis. So we have two major curves, and we have two minor curves, and the minor curves are made up of two smaller circles, right? When you rotate through to the 55, so that's a third. So we're starting here on the circumference. We have one pressure, two, up and out and down and back. The circumference of this ellipse at 55 degrees, as it rotates up and around, remember it's a tight turn, so you have to take it slowly, actually goes through the center point of this little circle. And that's what helped me to construct the whole script. Um, and that's how I've been able to work out the width of all the letters. Now I have something else to show you guys, which I will only really show you once the manual's out, because I think it's, 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 it's really quite amazing. I'm so exciting. Uh, and, uh, oh, there's a ton of exercises in the manual. Um, so what else was there? Somebody asked about a C, um, I'll do two types of the S's because they are such a nightmare. Uh, so we have this S. I'll, uh, we have this S. Um, I should have printed this grid up on the thing. So this S stays within here. Ready? It stays within a parallelogram. It goes there to there to there to there. One, two, three four, and five. So this S is a lot narrower than you think. Most people make this, and it's massive. This, this bit is all the way over here. You know, you're not, you're not making a Roman capital S. <laughs> you're making a, a different type of S. So you have to be conscious of the shape. Again, um, I put the letters in their groups, and the C and the S are very similar because they have this lead-in stroke, and this is bigger at the top than the C is. And this, in some instances, can go out further, or it can be in line with that. So what you're ending up with is, again, some angular confinements. Yeah. Uh, e. I hope when I see you guys writing, Karen and Chokin, when I see you guys writing your, your E's and your W's, that you've corrected them and you're not going back to the madness that you're doing before. So the W is this. One, line of universal beauty. Connective stroke, line of universal beauty, connective stroke. I don't know if you can see I'm actually using my guidelines to help me. Because I know that this is across two, two sets of lines. I also know that a third of it is on the 55. Is on the 55, but the the angle here is 50, so it runs over the 55. So I'm aiming for a third, and then I'm aiming for a third. But I'm going to go over that line, which the line of universal beauty is going to come down on. So I have little points to aim for. So if you're struggling with these letters, download the guidelines. They'll really help you because they sort of they sort of give you a little bit more information and, you know, I haven't posted anything about this as yet on how they work, but once you get the manual, you, you really get to see it. Uh, uh, let's see, an E. So you have a few E's. You can do this. Or you can do this. Keep it tight. Little turn. Above the 
above the halfway line because the bottom is actually bigger than the top like the B um, and oh, obviously the D because the D is such a difficult letter to do now one of the things about the D that I discovered which I, I think is absolutely phenomenal is this um, I'm not I'm not going to use a brush pen today because I'll have to dig that out in it. Uh, when we think of the D, this is the D. Sorry. It's very narrow at the front. There is a reason for that. I've been through that before. But the D and the S and the L belong to the same group because the D actually starts here. And slow down, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So this is what gives us the momentum to slow down, up, up, tight, turn, down, because it's preparing us to produce this little, little, horizontal loop because if you start from here and you do that you end up with this which is absolutely atrocious <laughs> so okay I need to get back to some proofreading um, I'll just show you those da, 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 da. So if you want to take some pictures, right, um, I will show you the other one. Uh, that's yesterday's. Uh, oh, there it is. So that is the other one. All right. So I hope. Um, I hope that helps. Um, I'm going to try to do a couple of these um, maybe once or twice a week. Once uh, we hand the manual in, I'll have a little bit more time on my hands. Um, it's very, very close. We're just sort of, I've, I've just rereading text like 10 million times um, just to make sure it's sort of clear. Uh, you're welcome. And um, don't forget, those of you, you're welcome, you're welcome. Those of you who live in Europe or London or, uh, or are willing to travel, Leo, I will speak with you next week. Um, I'm setting up some classes in the studio. I'll have all the information ready uh, end of next week. Uh, ah, actually, I can share something with you. So these are, <laughs> these are the notes on what can be taught, uh, prices, duration of classes, so much stuff. My goodness, really, so much stuff. Um, so I'm, it, it, it's taken me a little while to type this up because um, obviously I'm trying to get through the, the copy for the manual and proofreading it and checking it and double-checking spacing and checking shapes and adding little bits of other languages um, so that you guys can see the complete script is not um, not just limited to, to English. For you lovely people who write in Cyrillic or Greek, um, you're really lucky to see the script in your, in your own language as well. <sighs> right, okay, bye. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good evening.